Good morning, everyone. Welcome once again here on the Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Network to Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports. And how many of you guys watched some baseball last night? I did. I did. I watched a couple of games. And let's start off with that Astro A's game. A lot of runs early, a lot of runs late for the Astros. Carlos Correa. The much maligned fantasy player over the years. You know, I've never had a Carlos Correa year where he played enough games to even account for anything. But last night, against the Athletics in Game 1 of the ALDS, Carlos Correa goes 3 for 5 with 2 runs scored. The Astros win Game 1, a regular season that saw Correa slug only 383 through 201 at bats, he now has the 26 year old three home runs and 11 postseason at bats. He smacked the ball, if you watched it, over the fence in the Astro three run fourth, tacked on a second blast in the seventh inning last night. He's probably the Astros' hottest hitter now in a suddenly alive Houston Astros lineup against Oakland. <laughs> Heading into game two today. Uh, if you didn't like the performance from Correa, how about George Springer? He goes four for five yesterday with a run scored, a double, and an RBI. It was a 10 to five win. I mean, the Astros offense was just rolling. Springer, typically a great performer, not so much in the regular season. But in the playoffs, and this year that's what he's showing once again, that in the playoffs, he is a clutch player. Uh, 14 at-bats in the playoffs this year, five hits. He's a free agent to be. He has a 553 career slugging percentage in playoff games. That's 53 playoff games as he heads into game two today. And then there's also... One of my least favorite Astros, Alex Bregman, who went two for four. Home run, two runs scored. Uh, in September, Bregman only hit 197. But he's hit the ball hard the last two playoff games. He's hitting 292 in eight career playoff games. So just a look at the Astro three big stars from last night. There were others who performed really well. You know, Here's the thing. We can look at box scores, certainly. We can look at the lines. But as I look at this Astros line, I look at the runs they scored where they have crooked numbers in innings. And of the nine innings last night, they had a crooked number scored in three of them. In the fourth, in the sixth, and in the ninth. And those crooked numbers led to nine of their ten runs. Sixteen hits. So what does that say? The Astros... They score runs in bunches. Springer went four hits. Bregman went two hits. Correa went three hits. But also Tucker goes two for five. And Altuve, two for four with two RBIs. Springer a double. Bregman a homer. Correa two homers. It was just an offensive onslaught. Now pitching, a little bit to be desired there. McCullers got the start for game one. He goes four innings, eight hits, four earned, struck out five, gave up three home runs himself. But after that, after the fourth inning, the Oakland A's not only didn't score, they didn't have a hit. Taylor pitched the fifth, Paredes the sixth and seventh, Javier the eighth, Presley the ninth. No hits after the fourth inning. Obviously, that would mean no runs. For the Athletics, Bassett went four innings, gave up three earned. It was a big error by Marcus Simeon in that sixth inning that led to four unearned runs in that inning. Hitting-wise for the A's, and again, this was all before the fourth inning. Simeon, two hits. Olsen, a home run. Davis, a home run. Murphy, a home run. But everything after the fourth inning was goose eggs for the A's. So today in game two, they look to rebound. Tonight, that'll be a 437 start, Oakland and 
Houston from Dodger Stadium, Valdez going for the Astros, and Sean Mania going for the Swinging A's. There was another game last night, of course. I like to save this one for last. The Yankees and the Rays. Started out, each team scoring in the first inning. The Yankees score in the third. The Rays score, score two in the fourth. The Yankees score two in the fifth. And heading to the ninth inning, it's a four to three Yankee lead. What happens in the ninth inning? Has anyone noticed that Giancarlo Stanton has played three postseason games this year for the Yankees. They Remember, they swept their first two against Cleveland. Now they've played a third game against Tampa. And in all three games, Giancarlo Stanton has hit a home run. LeMahieu gets two hits. Hicks gets three hits. Judge hits a homer. Frazier hits a homer. Look, the ball that Clint Frazier hit out, it almost looked like a wiffle ball bat swing. It was you're waiting on the knuckleball wiffle ball to get there. You're queued up, and I said, "Wait!" It was just that quick. Going through the zone, I don't know if anyone has a quicker bat than Clint Frazier. And I wore my hat today, of course, in honor of Mr. Judge. You see, um, I thought about wearing my robe. But I may do that if he hits another home run tonight on Thursday show. But no bat quicker than Clint Frazier. Stanton hit the homer. Urshela playing probably some of the best third base. I'm watching the game with my brother last night, who is a lifelong Yankee fan. And as Urshela makes a play early in the game, he looks at me and says, that was nettlish. Now, if, you, if you're back to my era, you know what? being nettlish means. Good morning, John Hewitt. I want you to go by the mattress office in Lenore County today and tell that guy handling small claims what a great Yankee team he has to pull for. How about that? Uh, Glaber Torres with a hit, Frazier with the homer, Gardner gets a hit late. Higashiaka, home run again. He went two for four. He's Garrett Cole's personal catcher. Frankly, I think he ought to play every day. Cole pitched six innings, struck out eight, gave up two home runs himself. Like Houston's bullpen, shut down the athletics after the starter went out. So did the Yankee bullpen. Over the last three innings with Chad Green and Britton and Sessa, no hits were allowed to the Rays. For the Rays last night, Blake Snell goes five, gives up six hits, four earned, struck out four, but he gave up three big home runs. And those three big home runs were amazing. I did watch with amazement Arizarena, the outfielder for Tampa. He came over last year in the offseason from St. Louis. He is a player. He's batting third in the order for the Rays. He went three for four last night. You know, I almost would lead him off if I were Tampa. Yandy Diaz led off. You know, Yandy missed about the last month of the regular season. Did not play much at all. He's back in the leadoff spot. He goes 0 for 4. Brandon Lau goes 0 for 3. So their top two hitters go 0 for 7. And they're in the three hole with Airs Arena going 3 for 4. After that, G-Man Choi hit a homer. But not much after that in the order. Only two more hits. They only had six hits on the night. Tonight for Tampa, it's going to be Tyler Glass now. Two opinions here. Paul O'Neill and Arnie Jones. We both say Tyler Glass now is the best pitcher Tampa has. Is this a must win? Maybe not. I think it is. I think when you're down 1-0 in a best of five, you got to win game two. A lot of people will say game three. I think game three is most important in a seven-game set. I think game two may be most important in a five-game set, which this is. They're playing today at 8, 10 p.m. tonight at San Diego's Petco Park. And here's an interesting play. The Yankees have named Garcia, Lou Garcia, as their starting pitcher for tonight. Debbie Garcia, he's 3-2 and two on the season. He looks small of stature, but he has a tremendous arsenal of pitches. Debbie getting that playoff start tonight in lieu of Tanaka. Most thought Tanaka would get the start today. Not happening. 
It's going to be Debbie Garcia and Tyler Glass now going at it tonight. Game two of the ALCS. So let's talk about a little National League because we avoided that altogether yesterday. Um, and, and first of all, there's a couple of things to look at. I want to talk about the Miami Marlins. Starling Marte, his hand, he's uncertain as, as to his availability against the Braves. Marte struck, uh, fractured his pinky finger in game one against the Cubs. And there is, quote, no determination, end of quote, on his status. If he doesn't play outfielder, Magnura Sierra could earn another start in center field. But Marte is such an integral part of this Marlins offense. The Marlins, again, open today at 2.08. They're the first game today. They play in Houston at Minute Maid Park. Sandy Alcantara going against Max Freed. Those are some great young pitchers. Let's keep our eyes and ears open on the status of Starling Marte. Let's see what happens to him and where he's looking to land. Clevenger and Lamette, I can't wait to see the rosters of the Padres. Will Clevenger and Lamette be on the NLDS roster? You know, they were not on the wild card roster. <clears throat> Excuse me. Clevenger with the squeaky balking elbow. Uh, Lamette with the bicep injury. They were playing catch. They were throwing bullpens. Did not play against the Cardinals at all. I think for them to have a Chinaman's chance, as they say, I think they have a chance at all. The Padres, they have to have these two pitchers. And without them, it's going to be a tough road to hoe as we get into the playoffs for the Padres against the Dodgers. Now, starting, let's see. I told you the starters for today. Marlins will start Pablo Lopez in game two and Sixto Sanchez in game three against the Atlanta Braves. What kind of chance do you give the Marlins in the playoffs against the Braves? Do you think this could go five? Do you think that there's a sweep? Do you, you know, the Marlins are such a come-back-at-you team. When you think they have no chance, they have shown you such resilience, such fortitude. They just don't say quit. They can't say die. We will see how Don Mattingly's forces play today against Atlanta. Atlanta, on the other hand, look what they did to Cincinnati. They combined power. They combined pitching. A great combination in the playoffs. And Max Fried, who pitched shutout ball in the division, in the wild card round, goes today for the Braves. The Braves hitters, they have been incredible. They were great against Cincinnati. Look, you won't find many starting pitching staffs better than the Reds. The Braves scored runs, timely runs. They've got a great lineup. Ronald Acuna Jr., one of the great stars, Freddie Freeman, but it goes much deeper than that. And so as you look at Atlanta going against the Marlins, I think you'd have to say Atlanta is the favorite for sure. Now, does that mean that the Braves will win and, and not? Uh, who knows? It's baseball, right? But they're returning to the NLDS for the third straight year. 22 scoreless innings in their sweep of the Reds. Now, the Braves have not had postseason success. The Marlins have never lost a postseason series in their history. Write that one down. Tell me another team that has never lost a postseason series in their team history. Okay? Whereas the Braves are trying to avoid becoming the first team in Major League history to lose 11 consecutive postseason series. When did the Braves last win a playoff series? 2001, when they swept the Astros in the NLDS. 2001, it's been 19 years since the Braves have won a postseason series 